Anshitika, India is here at RIO Expo 2023. And uh, what have been the recent developments and achievements of your company? So, uh, we recently signed a PPA for 400 megawatts uh, mm -hmm. with Juvenal. Uh, we won an NTPC auction a couple of months ago, 300 megawatts. We'll be signing the PPA uh, in coming days. And another three or four auctions that we're participating in, hopefully we'll have close to a gigawatt of uh, under execution projects by end of this year. All the best for it, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, could you brief us on the emerging technologies in the solar industry? Uh, uh, so there are different aspects to the technologies. One, mm -hmm. if you're just talking about solar, let's talk about the solar panels first. I mean, we saw multi-crystalline panels, poly-crystalline panels now move to mono work. Now mono is also becoming obsolete. We are looking at most of the ITPs, including us. Everyone will opt for a top one technology. And three years from now, we are looking at HGT, HJT as a potential technology for uh, solar panels. And on the inverter side, uh, there was uh, there was a move shift from a central inverter to a string inverter. Mm -hmm. Now people are back to central inverter because of the 20% basic customs duty that we have to pay on central uh, string inverters now. But a lot of manufacturers have started manufacturing in string inverters in India. We see that you know back uh, the shift back to the string inverters uh, in, in the coming years. So on the solar side, these are the two key technology elements yeah. as we see. And, and lastly, on the transmission side, the improvement in the conductor capacity, we see a lot of uh, you know more power getting evacuated from the same conductor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and and the transmission line carrying more capacity. So these are the technological changes that we're seeing on the solar side. And while you didn't ask about the wind side, we see that the capacity of wind turbines is increasing. We have about 250 megawatts of wind in India uh, with two megawatt turbines each. Now we are talking to a lot of uh, uh, suppliers, OEMs. They're all looking at 3.3 to 3 megawatt of turbines. So that's another shift in the technology that we are seeing that will happen on the wind side as well. Thank you so much. Please shed some light on the company's upcoming projects along with the future roadmap. So we just briefly spoke about it. Uh, two projects, 400 megawatt with Juvenal, uh, likely to get commissioned mid of next year. Mm -hmm. Another 300 end of next year, solar. And a uh, few auctions that we've participated in, the results are awaited. So that'll be all solar. So close to a gigawatt of solar capacity, uh, getting additional capacity getting commissioned uh, between mid of next year to early 2025. And starting starting 2026 onwards, we'll do 600 megawatts each year, and about 800 odd megawatts, uh, 27 onwards until 2030. That will make us uh, a port a platform size of close to 4.5 odd gigawatts uh, by 2930. Great, sir. Kindly comment on the current and upcoming trends in the development of green financing. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question. You know, on, on the financing side, what's happening today is. Uh, we have been seeing green financing for quite some time, but now uh, with with more of ESG focus on all the corporates as well as the bankers, uh, you are seeing a lot of green financing by companies like ADB, AIIB, a lot of multilaterals, not only multilaterals, a lot of commercial banks are now, mm -hmm. uh, international commercial banks are uh, looking at green financing and we're talking to multiple uh, banks uh, for us to look at the new uh, projects, fund the new projects that we're currently executing. Mm -hmm. Where, according to you, does India stand in the global RE scenario? What gives us an edge and what more needs to be done? India is very well placed. Uh, if you talk about the key geographies, uh, US, LATAM, mm -hmm. has Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Colombia, and then you have China, and then you have India. This is, this is where you find scale. The, mm -hmm. the, the key differentiator that we believe that you have for the Indian market is here you can choose to scale up generally you can scale up as you want right here this this market gives you the scale while also give you an opportunity to be selective at the same time mm -hmm. you can choose the state you can choose the auction you have 50 gigawatts of auctions every year you see one and a half two gigawatts of auctions every month so you be, can be selective that's the, the the best part about india um, things which can be improved a little is implementation and enforceability of the contract mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very important uh, and secondly um, the while land is a state subject i think uh, uh, if there are consistency in the policies across states in the land a lot of international investors like us mm -hmm. would be far more willing to do uh, than what we are already doing so these are the two changes i would propose uh, that can happen to make it more conducive for international investors.